Hello, and welcome to another Explorer Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and on behalf of National Geographic Education, I am so happy to see you all here today and welcome you to another Explorer Classroom. National Geographic believes in the power of exploration and wonder to change the world. National Geographic Explorers are cutting edge scientists, amazing researchers, powerful storytellers, adventurers, filmmakers, photographers, teachers, conservationists, and so much more. Something our explorers all have in common is that they love sharing their work with amazing students like you. Explorer Classroom events bring exploration to life and connect students around the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons followed by time for your questions. And this fall, we are hosting Explorer Classroom for young students every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, our explorer is Whitney Goodell. Whitney is a marine ecologist and geospatial analyst, and she's committed to using tools and data to help protect the ocean and to make it a healthier place, one where an ecosystem can be in balance. And on projects of all sizes, Whitney collaborates to help protect our oceans from the vibrant coral reef systems to the dark yet to be explored ocean depths. Whitney works with National Geographic Pristine Seas, a group of people dedicated to using research to protect what is left of the world's pristine waters and making more areas of the ocean clean and healthy. Whitney also works with National Geographic's Exploration Technology Lab, and they develop and use deep sea drop cameras to explore the ocean depths where it's currently too deep for people to travel, at least for now. Whitney has worked in coastal areas all around the globe, such as Mozambique and Brazil, and she's coming to us live today from her home state of Hawaii. She explores many ways to protect and better understand our ocean through collaboration and amazing tools. And she's gonna show us that in today's presentation. But before we drop down into the ocean with Whitney, I wanna take a minute to celebrate all the students who are joining us today. We have kids registered to join us from all around the world. And we'd like to give a special shout out to our pals who are in Canada, United Kingdom, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Washington State, Mississippi, California, Florida, Georgia, Texas, North Carolina, New York, Ohio, Arizona, Alabama, Maryland, Virginia, Nevada, Michigan, and more. And to all our viewers, we're so happy you are here with us today, and we want to wish you a happy Native American Heritage Month. And now it's time to turn it over to Whitney for today's Explorer Classroom all about underwater science. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and thank all of you for joining. I'm so excited to hang out with you guys today. Um, so yeah, like Jennifer mentioned, I'll be talking a little bit about um, what I do and what Christine Sees does, and in general, what scientists can do in the ocean. So. I'll just share my screen with you here so that you can see all these cool pictures. All right. Okay, let me swap this around. All right, are we, oops. Are we seeing, seeing things all right? <laughs> okay. Great, so. Um, okay, so as Jennifer mentioned, I'm Whitney Goodell, and I'm a scientist. I'm a marine ecologist, which means that I study the ocean and the life in it, and I look at how all the different parts of the ocean are connected. So I work with National Geographic's Pristine Seas, which is a team of people working to protect the beautiful places that still exist in our ocean. And I also work with Nat Geo's Exploration Technology Lab, 
which makes really cool tools and technology that can be used to study the ocean. And so today, I'll be talking about some of the ways that we study the ocean. So lots of our Earth is ocean, almost three quarters of it. And we need a healthy ocean. It's important for food, for jobs, for culture. And it's also important for keeping our Earth in balance. Some of you may have heard about climate change and how our Earth is getting hotter because of the carbon dioxide that humans are putting into the air. Well, the ocean can actually help by taking some of that carbon from the atmosphere. Life on Earth depends on a healthy ocean, and there's still lots to learn about the ocean. So to help protect it, we study, we study it so that we know more about it. But how do we study things that are all underwater? see. Oh, sorry. We got, oh, there we go. <laughs> so there's actually lots of ways to study life underwater. There are many different tools that we use, and it depends on how deep we want to go. And first off, I want you guys to understand that the ocean is really, really deep. You know how deep? The ocean is so deep that you could fit an entire mountain underwater and it wouldn't even poke up above the surface. So I'm going to share with you four ways that the Pristine Seas team studies the ocean at different depths. And in the shallow ocean, which is, so here in the shallow ocean, which is like the areas just off of the beach when you go to, when you go to visit the ocean we use scuba equipment, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Then as you go deeper, there's a different kind of diving called rebreather diving. So down here, as you get deeper, it starts to look more like visiting outer space. So don't you think this little guy here kind of looks like an astronaut? He looks like he's wearing a spacesuit. It's because it's, it's a totally different world down there. So it's kind of like being an astronaut on our own Earth. To go down deeper, we can also use submersibles, which are like small submarines. And to look at stuff at the very bottom of the ocean, remember this is deep, deep, deeper than some of the tallest mountains. We use remote cameras. So these are some of the ways that we can study the ocean and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about each of them. So let's start with scuba diving. Have any of you heard of scuba diving before? Raise your hand. Some people, some people have heard of scuba diving. So scuba diving uses equipment to help us with underwater breathing. That's actually what the OOB in scuba stands for, underwater breathing. So this helps us breathe underwater, which is important if you want to stay down there for a while. Have any of you ever played that game in the pool where you try to dive down and pick up pennies from the bottom? It's hard, right? You have to hold your breath and dive down and pretty soon your breath runs out and you have to come back up. Well, scuba equipment is kind of like carrying a backpack of air with us. So we carry around an air tank on our back and we have a hose that helps bring the air from the tank to our mouth so that we can breathe it. So now we're breathing underwater, but we also need a mask to be able to see things underwater. And we have a wetsuit to keep us warm because a lot of times the ocean can get really cold and we wanna stay there for a while. And it kind of got cut off in this photo, but we also wear fins that help us swim around. So just think if you had all this gear, if you had scuba gear, just think of how many pennies you could collect from the bottom of the pool. So what do we do when we're underwater? Well, we count fish. Since we can breathe underwater, we can spend time with the fish and hang out for a while. And we count them so that we know, so that we know if there's a lot of fish in, in, in an area or only a few. 
So this is Alan, and Alan is the chief scientist of pristine seas, and he's counting fish and writing the numbers down. Writing underwater? Yep, we have underwater paper to write everything down on. So in this photo, how many fish can you guys count? Can you count five, 20? Are you seeing them all? Make sure you're counting all the little guys too. So remember when I said that when you go deeper, it's kind of like going to outer space. There's something called rebreather diving, which is like scuba, but it involves a lot more equipment because it's harder to visit deeper parts of the ocean. So kind of like visiting the moon, we humans need a lot of gear in order to get there because it's a really harsh environment. Doesn't this even look kind of like the moon? I think it does. So in this photo, this is my friend Brian and Brian is using rebreather equipment to look at all the fish down deep. And because it's so deep, Brian has lots of equipment. Look at all of the air tanks he has strapped onto him. And look how dark it is. The deeper you go, the less light reaches down there. So Brian is actually using a really bright flashlight. Can you see the light that he's shining on that fish? Okay, so now what if we wanted to go even deeper? How are we gonna do that? Well, once you start going even deeper, you need a vehicle, like a submersible. Or like I said, it's like a little submarine. So this is the submersible from the Undersea Hunter Group, which is an amazing group that we work with quite regularly. And oops, and this is the sub from above. So oh, we still get mixed up here. Sorry about that. So this is the sub from above. And as you can see, three people fit inside of it. And it's dry and warm down there and we're just wearing regular clothes. So it's like a reverse fishbowl. We're in a fishbowl of air looking at the animals outside. So we can go down deep, count animals, take video. We can even collect things using a mechanical claw that's outside the sub. So this is actually me on the left and it was fascinating to see the ocean like this. Someday that might be one of you in there. So there's lots of stuff to explore down deep. Okay, now we're, we still have a lot of the ocean left. There's a lot of ocean that's really, really deep, even deeper than this. So if we wanted to go down there, how are we gonna do that? Well, one way is to send cameras. <clears throat> so with cameras, we aren't sending ourselves down to the bottom. We're staying up on the ship and we toss cameras overboard and they sink down to the very bottom of the ocean and they sit on the seafloor. And they have really bright lights because remember, it's dark down there. There is no light. And these cameras film anything that passes by. So then after a while, after the cameras recorded lots of really cool stuff, it floats back up to the surface where we can pick it back up and look at all of the cool video it recorded. And we see some amazing stuff. There is all sorts of cool sharks and weird fishes and squid. What else do you think lives down there? Can you use your imagination to think of the weirdest creature possible? What does it look like? How does it move? What does it eat? The deep sea is so unknown that your imaginary creature might actually be real. It could be down there and we don't even know yet. So there's still lots of exploring to do. So what do you guys think? Do you want to go down and spend a minute sitting on the bottom of the ocean, watching all sorts of cool creatures? Should we do that? You don't even have to get wet. You can do it from your own living room. Let's give it a try. Okay, so we're on the ship. You see there, you can kind of see the small little camera on the ship there. We're gonna toss it overboard 
And it's gonna go down, 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 down into the deep. And now we're sitting on the bottom. It's completely dark. And we're gonna turn on the lights and see what's living down there. Look at all the things living on the ocean floor. Remember, we are really deep down there. There's all sorts of crabs and eels, different kinds of fish. There's even a shark coming through here. This is a six gill shark. These are deep water sharks. So we'll never see them up at the surface. And notice how slowly it's moving. The shark's moving so slow because it's cold down there, really cold. So when everything's cold, everything moves a little slower. Wasn't that amazing? You guys did it. You sat on the ocean floor at the very bottom of the deep sea and you watched life in the ocean. Okay, so now let's go back up to the surface. As we've seen, there are lots of really cool ways to observe life in the ocean. You've just done it right now. So maybe one day some of you will come join me to study the ocean and help protect it because that's really what it's about. It's about protecting the ocean. There's still so much to learn about the ocean and the more that we know, the better we can protect it and all the cool animals living in it. So where do you start? What can you do? Well, I think a good place to start is by getting to know the ocean better. If you live near the ocean, go spend time in it. Go hang out in the ocean, put a mask on, stick your head underwater, look at all the cool stuff there. Go visit the tide pools. There's lots of amazing creatures in the ocean. If you don't live near the ocean, there's amazing resources online, lots of cool videos and games. The Nat Geo Education website has lots of stuff. And you've already started right now by coming and hanging out with me today. So I feel like if you, if you learn about the ocean, a lot of times learning about something leads to caring about it. And caring about the ocean can shape our decisions in what we eat, how we behave in and around the ocean, and what we consider acceptable uses of the ocean. So if you get to know the ocean better, maybe you'll start thinking of it like a friend or a family member. And you'll do what you can to make sure that it stays happy and healthy because, because that's what you'd do for a friend. The ocean is really big and we need it. So it needs all of us to help keep it happy and healthy. Thank you guys so much for taking the time today to learn a little bit about the ocean and ways of studying it. And I would love to hear your questions. Whitney, that was amazing. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to think of the ocean as our friend. And we actually, we have a relationship with the ocean, whether we live near it or not. So I want to thank you for that reminder and helping all of our little friends out there know that the ocean can be their pal. <laughs> well, friends, before we get started with questions, I have heard that we've got some viewers checking in from India. We want to welcome you and thank you so much for coming today. And also our pals in Ms. Mangali Soto's class, welcome back to Explore Classroom. We're gonna start with one of our YouTube questions. Um, we've actually got two about tools from our YouTube viewer named Kevlar. And so Kevlar is curious, how do you get more air in your tanks when you run out? And can your cameras work in the deepest parts of the ocean? These are two very good questions, Kevlar. So I'll start with the first one as far as getting more air in your tank. Well, for the most part, we have to come back up to the surface if we run out of air and we have to refill the tanks using machines, using air compressors. So kind of similar to like when you pump your car tire up, you sort of use this machine that pumps air back into that tank and then we can go back down. So it's not really feasible to do that underwater, which is why when those divers, those rebreather divers go really deep, they've got all sorts of tanks strapped all over them. 
because I don't want to run out of air. Oh, and the second question. What was the second question again? It's can your drop cameras work in the deepest parts of the ocean? Oh, yeah. So the drop camera that I showed um, can go down to a depth of 6,000 meters, which is like 20,000 feet, which covers most of the ocean. It covers the like um, the abyssal plains. So abyssal is referring to the deep, deep parts of the ocean. The ocean kind of gets flat at the bottom, like a bathtub, and the cameras can go to, to most, most of the ocean. Now, the ocean also has a few spots where there's really deep trenches, where it drops down super, super deep. Those cameras that I showed don't actually go down into those trenches, but their sister cameras um, that the same exploration technology lab at Nat Geo um, that they made, they actually have another type of camera that does go down super deep and has gone down super deep. So it's pretty amazing stuff. Well, Kevlar, you might wanna get involved with that kind of work when you're older. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go to one of our on-screen guests we have got Thomas and Santiago coming in from Rhode Island. So turn on your microphone, friends, and ask your question loud and clear. Oh, so how many times have you been on a submarine? Like, I I have been. Question, so. I have been in a submarine. I think two times for for science research. And I would love to do it more because two times is not enough. Let me tell you, when you get in one of those things and you go down and see all the cool things down there, you want to do it more. So hopefully I'll get to do it some more. We have another question from one of our YouTube guests. Caleb wants to know, can people visit the very deepest parts of the ocean yet? Hmm. It's still pretty challenging for people to visit the very deepest parts of the ocean, but that's not to say that people can't, because a lot of times by saying we can't, we, then we don't, and someday we do want to go down there. So I think we just haven't yet. That's a powerful word, yet. <laughs> We're going to go to one of our on-screen guests. We have the Ursillo Family Homeschool coming in from Connecticut. So go ahead and ask your question. Um, how deep do you go? How deep do we go in general or using a certain kind of equipment? Has she gone into the ocean? Well, how deep have you gone into the ocean? How deep have I gone into the ocean? So the deepest that I personally have gone was actually when I was in that little submarine. And I went down about a thousand feet under the ocean's surface, which is pretty deep. It's so deep that there's really not much light there. You could kind of see a little bit of light above, but that was about it. Oh, I bet that was a really cool experience. It was amazing, like visiting another world. We're going to go to another one of our on-screen guests. We have Surya coming in from Virginia. So Surya, ask your question. What is the deepest point of all of the world's oceans? The deepest point is super deep. I think it's about 36,000 feet. Think right around there. And so that actually fits. You could put Mount Everest in there and it would still fit and never poke up above the ocean, above the surface. Whoa. <laughs> we have a question coming in from a YouTube viewer named Catherine. And she's curious, Whitney, have you ever seen a giant squid? Oh, I would love to see a giant squid. I would love to see one in person. Well, maybe not in person. They could be kind of scary in person. But we have seen different kinds of squid on our deep sea cameras, but I can't say that we've ever gotten a giant one swim through. But that would be amazing. 
they might be they might be so smart that maybe they see our cameras and they're like, um, I don't want to be on screen. <laughs> Camera shy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Catherine, if you're interested in the Pristine Seas, they have a wonderful Twitter account. So make sure you follow them because they share all the things that they discover when they're using their drop cams. Lots of cool photos, yeah. We're going to go to another on-screen guest from Connecticut. It happens to be one of the Ursillo boys' best friends. We've got Thomas in Connecticut. Go ahead and ask your question. My question is, What's your favorite part about being an ocean explorer? Oh, that's such a hard question because there's so many. <laughs> I love being an ocean explorer, partly because that means that I get to hang out all day studying and working on and working in something that I love. So that's pretty amazing. Um, I think that I also love seeing and learning new things all the time because there's, there's, like I said, there's still so much to know about the ocean. So it's like, we're never done learning. I love that. We have another question from a YouTube viewer named Haroon and he's curious, do you think there are underwater animals that we haven't discovered yet? Hmm, I definitely think there's underwater animals that we haven't discovered yet. And you know, there's, constantly, like every, every week, every month, there's always new species being discovered. So that tells me that we've still got a lot to go because if we're always finding new species, it means we're not done yet. And like I said, the deep ocean is really underexplored. There's still a lot to know about it. We actually know more about the surface of Mars than we do about our own ocean floor. So I think we've got a lot of exploring to do. And I hope these kids will help you out, Whitney. Yeah. Another YouTube viewer named Cameron is asking, have you ever discovered or worked on a sunken pirate ship? Oh, that would be cool. I've never found gold before. I have, I have been diving on sunken ships that didn't seem to have any evidence of being pirate ships. But a lot of times sunken ships can actually have lots of, lots of fish that decide to make it their home, fish and corals and things like that that start growing on it. So they're actually pretty cool places to dive. But they have not yet found any pirate treasure. We're going to go to one of our on-screen guests. We have Jersey Shore Area Elementary. And if you would like to unmute yourself and ask a question, feel free. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I haven't found my underwater sea. Have I ever found what in the underwater sea? Well, I can't really hear. Did anybody Golden else catch that? Necklaces. Golden necklaces. Oh, I haven't found any golden necklaces, but a friend of mine actually found a gold ring, like a wedding ring down underwater. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of treasures in the ocean. Yeah, living and non-living. <laughs> We have another question from YouTube viewers. Anthony and Jaden are wondering, Whitney, what is the most interesting thing that you have found or discovered in the underwater? I think, well, I think everything is interesting. I have to say, I love when I see chimeras swim past our drop cam. So chimeras, they were one of the, one of the fish in the photos that I showed from the drop cams. They look so alien to me. And they kind of, to me, it seems like they sort of swim like spaceships. So I think that chimeras are fascinating. 
Well, friends, we are starting to run out of time, and I know you've probably got a lot more questions for Whitney. Don't worry, we're going to explain how you can be in touch with her towards the end of the show. But Whitney, before we go, could you just remind us how we can take on your mission? What can we do to help preserve pristine seas and better understand the ocean like you do? Yeah, we all are part of this. So if we can all make an effort to really better understand the ocean, which will lead to caring more about it and making decisions with the ocean in mind. And not only making decisions for yourself with the ocean in mind, but sharing what you know about the ocean with other people. That's really, really powerful, sharing what you know and what you learn, because that helps other people know more about the ocean as well. And the more that we know about it, the more we care about it and the better we can protect it. Whitney, thank you so much for reminding us today that not only do we have a relationship with the ocean, but when we take care of it, it benefits us too. Yeah. <laughs> so for friends of all ages who have been learning along with us today, we would love to see how you've been inspired. Maybe you want to draw a picture or write a story or call a family member and share your new love for underwater science with them. Whatever it may be, Whitney and all of us at National Geographic would love to see how you've been called to action. Your teachers and your family can send us messages on Twitter. If you use the tag at NatGeoEducation and the hashtag Explore Classroom, we can find them and respond to your questions and your comments and see the work that you're doing. Also, Whitney and the Pristine Seas team are all on Twitter. So find us and send us some messages. If you'd like to explore more with us this week, we've got some more Explorer Classroom episodes coming on this Thursday. At 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be learning about cotton top tamarinds and exploring lost places with our older friends. So if you've got pals in third grade and up, tell them to, to sign on and you can join too. We've also got plenty more incredible explorers coming on the schedule. Okay, so everyone who is on screen with me, let's turn on our microphones and give Whitney a nice and loud thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you.